Good morning, everyone. Well, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be able to present the uh, results of our very small study. Um, and I acknowledge um, the WA Clinical Training Network, you all, for actually um, uh, funding and awarding our grant. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge um, my fellow uh, authors on the, on the uh, study, Alan Rubinson, uh, Meg Harold, and Finesse. And I need to add um, Angela Jark, um, who um, pr provided me with information about every statistical permutation possible with this um, as a analysis statistically. So she'll also be an author on the paper um, when we submit. So um, assessment of learning outcomes in simulation-based learning, how our physio students um, self-assessed competencies compared to our simulation facilitators observed competencies. Um, I need to start, begin by give, giving a bit of a background into um, where this study fits in the context of um, our program at Curtin. Um, in 2014, many of you will be aware there was a national HWA funded study involving 16 universities Australia-wide um, looking at um, simulation as uh, a replacement for traditional placements um, throughout, throughout Australia. Every university impl implemented that slightly differently. At Curtin we had an 18 day uh, placement over three streams. Um, it was well staffed and well resourced um, from the HWA grant and we had uh, 60 students over two uh, placements and that we had very positive student outcomes and I wasn't particularly part of the implementation of that program. But subsequently, given the positive outcomes that they had, Curtin School of Physio and Exercise Science um, decided to implement or continue to implement um, the, the program, albeit based around a, a redesigned uh, timetable based on the fact that we needed to have some cost saving in order to actually make it sustainable. So we wanted to maintain the length of the placement to keep it comparable to traditional placements. We wanted to maintain the number and the complexity of the scenarios that we presented. Um, so we redesigned the placement, um, including four streams, um, the existing cardio neuro musk streams, each for five days, and an additional lifespan stream, because that was what was thought um, was needed within the scope of the placement. And the changes included um, uh, in the introduction of a new workbook that made the students, um, or enabled the students to undertake independent tasks. And the change so that um, the feedback and debrief was pri primarily peer driven rather than facilitator driven. And so these changes were around the costs of uh, actor time and also facilitator time over the placement. So the peer dri driven debrief followed a plus delta model Monday to Thursday. And then on the final day of each stream, it was around um, self assessment um, using what the facilitator assessed them on um, on that same day. So um, there were formative assessments on the last day of every stream uh, at the end of every five days. Um, and um, as part of that assessment, there was comparison between the student and facilitator in a sort of a face-to-face -face, um, feedback also. Uh, and we had 96 students, two lots of 48 students, go through that um, uh, model in 2015. So this is a very busy slide, I apologise. This is a, an example of the typical timetable that we um, presented to the students in 2015. So I think this pointer works. If you, we, we basically had a, a period of simulation where there was pre-brief, uh, scenario and debrief. Then there was independent workbook tasks and then there was supervisor-led debrief at some point during the day. So this is an example of the neuro timetable for uh, a Wednesday and you'll see that um, two of these students, in fact four of them, two groups of two, had their pre-brief um, independently, pre-brief with the supervisor, um, they had their simulation, peer debrief and then workbook tasks and at the end of the morning they had their supervisor debrief and one supervisor was actually looking after eight students in that time and we had two um, concurrent scenarios running side by side with two different um, supervisors so these guys had the same scenario in the afternoon and these guys crossed back in the, in the afternoon as well. Um, so very complicated but um, straightforward if you know how to read the timetable. Um, describing in, in terms of student flow how we managed 48 students, we had three groups of 16 students and every student group uh, went through each of these streams in a different order. So these 16 did musk, neuro, cardio and then lifespan altogether. These guys did cardio, musk, neuro. These guys did neuro, cardio, musk. So we had 16 students concurrently um, in three different streams at once. Um, and we had where the red stars are, assessment points at the end of each scenario, sorry, at the end of each stream. Um, so every student will have had three assessments over the three streams. Uh, and then at 
the end of the placement, there was moderation of those assessments as to whether they passed or failed the unit. It's a very brief overview. Um, at each of those five star points, they were assessed over 12 competency, uh, competencies. And again, we don't need to read all these competencies, but essentially they were assessed as whether they had achieved the competency, they are unsure whether they achieved it or they didn't achieve it. And if we make that um, a score of one, two and three, um, the best possible score that a student could achieve is a 12 and the worst possible score was a 36 if they just failed everything, um, didn't have any of those. Um, but essentially after the first placement of 48 students, um, the supervisors were saying to us that there was a mismatch between their perception of how the students were doing and the students' own perception. So that was the basis for which we um, undertook this study. We're basically comparing in our aims the perceptions of the students over those 12 criteria um, versus the facilitators and actually identifying whether there were differences across streams, cardio, neuro and musk. Um, we also looked at whether there were differences over weeks, were they better, was there better agreement at week one through to week three. Um, and based on all of that, we wanted to make changes to the current structure so we could tweak what we're currently doing. So we basically looked at um, the assessment of the supervisor versus the facilitator. We collected that data um, over the second placement of 48. So it's the same slide as before. Um, at each point we had, oh, sorry. At each point we had 16 um, assessments from the facilitator and 16 assessments from the students. Um, therefore, over that whole stream we had 96 responses. Um, for each stream, so 288 responses all up, 144 facilitator responses, 144 student responses. So overall, um, the physiotherapy, as the facilitators had preempted, um, their perceptions of their attainment of learning goals actually didn't match the facilitators' perceptions, and it was around whether or not they were passing or, or whether or not they were unsure of whether they were passing. Um, if they were failing, there was agreement, um, and across the streams, this was true also, although there was variation as to which of those 12 criteria actually there, there showed differences. Um, and if we talked about the minimum of 12 and the maximum of 36, um, you can see just graphically really quickly the big long, um, uh, sorry, the big long uh, blue um, uh, representations on the graph there are all the supervisors versus the facilitators where there's a, a group of 12 and then there's lots of, uh, lots more variation down the line in the scores. Um, stream by stream within, so within cardio, were the cardio facilitators nicer to the students and or had more match than the, than the neuro or the musk, there actually were some differences. Musk facilitators tended to give students more pass marks. Um, but in terms of being a student and moving through those streams, the student marked themselves the same no matter what stream they were in. Um, there was no difference um, across the weeks, so there was no effect from increased exposure as the weeks went by, the, the same differences were there and there was also no difference um, in the order that the um, students did the streams. So um, that didn't in impact on the outcomes. So it was a very encouraging from our point of view that it seemed to be that there were more human factors involved in the disparity rather than uh, the design of the simulation itself. Um, there were no weekly differences and no stream differences, uh, no order differences rather. Um, but we feel like we could still use this to modify um, our existing timetable because we want to you know, make, make the agreement as, as uh, close as possible. So specifically, um, moving forward, we've changed the orientation of the students so that um, in those areas where there was disagreement in each stream, we're very specific um, as to um, explaining the students the ex expectations of the placement. Um, we've actually placed now, um, we've put in place some pre uh, placement training of how to debrief, how to provide a feedback effectively and how to receive feedback effectively, which wasn't there before. Uh, and we've also made significant changes to the scheduling so that we have, have actually incorporated more immediate um, supervisor debrief straight after the scenarios are run. Um, we're also, we also, we've also developed some sub-criteria um, so that they're very clear it, what, what each criteria means um, in terms of the facilitator's assessment. And we've also you know, implemented a mid-guide a midweek rather guided self-review of how they're going so they're on the same page. So in conclusion, um, the grant from the WA Clin Clinical Training Network has enabled us or provided us the opportunity to actually spend some time looking at this data that we otherwise wouldn't have had. Um, and we've already translated these changes into the placement that we've just finished in 2016. We've just started our first, sorry, just finished our first um, placement and these changes have already been incorporated and anecdotally 
um, we think that they've been quite, quite positively received. So thank you to, for awarding us the grant. Perhaps I could ask, it sounds like in your presentation and a little bit in John's presentation as well, that there's a, it's a bit of a case that the students don't know what they don't know. So, because um, we heard from John that they weren't sure the kind of themes that they should have been exploring maybe from the material that they'd learnt in other lectures and in your group, um, the difference between their own, their own perceptions of how they were doing and what the, um, their tutors were judging them at, that gap maybe indicates, is there a problem with what the, ex what the learning objectives or how the learning objectives are presented to the students? In other words, at the end of the musculoskeletal term, we expect you to be able to do and understand these things. I think it's more around the fact, and, and there's, there's evidence out there, um, there's a paper in 2016 <coughs> around the fact that physiotherapy students and potentially other groups um, are very hard on themselves. Um, and so um, where we think they're doing just fine, they want to get you know, even better. So their perception of actually passing um, to their satisfaction um, may not match the facilitator's expectation and we need to communicate that better. Um, the, the objectives for their learning are very clearly set out for them and we, we thought we were explaining that clearly. Clearly there were gaps. Um, but there's also evidence around the fact that you know, there's, there's one idea in, in simulation that you provide as much facilitation of the debrief as possible and then there's the other extreme that's been, again, in the literature where you provide little and let them facilitate and clinically reason themselves their own performance in a peer group way. And, and in this millennial um, climate we're in, that they like doing that. We have to kind of um, bridge that gap and be somewhere in the middle to actually achieve um, what's good for both sides, I guess. Mm. It's interesting to hear physiotherapy students judge themselves harshly. Often uh, surveys of doctors, most doctors rate themselves as above average. Uh, when, you know. <laughs> the, 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 same, the same study quotes, um, and, and we didn't show here, this here which was encouraging, the same study quotes the fact that poor physiotherapy students rate themselves highly and highly um, ranked physio yes. students rank themselves lowly. Um, and this cohort was randomised, so we don't know whether these were the best students or not. Um, but, so there is, that, um, there is that difference. Thanks very much. Thank you.